He said, 49ers first joint practice wrapping up. I have Trey Lance 11 of 18 with a spike. His best play came on fourth and long in a two-minute drill when he scrambled and found Debo Samuel for a first down. Lance had some time to throw early, but that quickly dissolved. Had him getting touch sacked four times. I actually think these two are kind of related. That his best play was he scrambled and found Debo. And one of the things that happened today was he didn't get great protection. Do you take it as the one of the 18 is the spike or that was separate? I have. I mean, I take that as it's one of the 18. If he says 11 to 18 with us. Well, that's a good question. Hard to tell. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, no, I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Good question. I, I, I am just I, I refuse to worry about the interior offensive lineman. I, I just like pass protection. This gets back to the corners. Most teams do not feel like they have, you know, Larry Allen and Jim Otto at center and guard. That's just not the case. You know, the Eagles, I would say, feel probably the best of most teams in the league of like all five of their offensive linemen are really good. That's just not the case. You know, at one point in time, the 49ers got Lincoln Tomlinson from the Lions for a seventh round pick. Now, he had been a first round pick. So that you could say, well, there was lineage there. He was highly thought of coming out in the draft and they resurrected his career. That is not the case, you would say, with, you know, Brunskill, former tight end, AAF guy, Brendel. Uh, was, I think, a fifth-round pick years ago. Uh, Aaron Banks was, I mean, he's a high pick, right? I mean, second-round pick at guard. And even Burford, I mean, that's a fourth-round pick. Like that's I would imagine if we just did a study, looked at the centers and guards, like there are a high percentage of centers and guards probably, right, in that wherever Burford was picked in that yeah. kind of general range, give yep. or take 30 picks. So th- 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 they got enough. In terms of the, where they draft the guys, just you, we've been enough practice, see body types. Like, there's a reason Kyle makes $14 million. I would imagine um, Forrester makes 1.5. You know, that you, you got to make this shit happen. And uh, yeah, it's just, I, I think it's a work in progress for most teams. And we'll talk about the Kinlaw play. Like, he just, like, people get destroyed all over the place. You know, I mean, it's just most guards are not just going to be like, I'm locking up. You're at a huge disadvantage. Think, and this goes back to the corners. There have been so many pass. When, when I got was in the NFL, there were like three defensive tackles that could pass rush, and they were like stars. Now I would say it feels like every team has a legit defensive tackle, and some teams have multiple. So it's just hard. You know, it's just your guard, you got to coach them up. I, I don't think it's really avoidable. It's like, is this going to be an issue? Well, it's like, it's really an issue for most teams. To me, is it are these guys going to be below average players? If they're just functional, like you can win with functional players. Patriots did it. The Colts did it forever. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady made a career out of it. Now you can be like, well, John, two greatest quarterbacks ever. They get rid of the ball. I get that. But like you said, the scramble part, that's why you get a running guy. It's going to be very difficult, I would say, moving forward, even like in a couple years if Trey becomes a good player and Trent retires or whatever. Like, they're probably not going to have highly priced guards and centers. Now, they might draft like a center in five years in the second round or whatever, but they're not going to have like, is it crazy that Niners center makes $27 million? Like, they're always going to be probably on rookie contracts. And I would say fly flyer guys like Tomlinson. That's going to be how, that's usually how good teams make their hay at guard and center, unless you get like, you know, like the Eagles drafted Jason Kelsey, he became like a Hall of Fame player, and they built their franchise. Like he's been a stalwart, but they the, like he takes away from another position when you get decent money. I don't know how much exactly Kelsey makes. I'd guess thirteen, fourteen million bucks. But I would say for the foreseeable future, if we look at the amount of money they're going to pay guards and centers, wouldn't you say it's going to be one of the lower position groups? Yeah, I mean, I think it'll it'll depend on. What do they do? With, how do they do? They pay both tight ends. Is are Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk both on the team after Brandon Ayuk's extension? Right. I think the good thing with them, they do save. Uh, you say I want to say they save money on the D line because of how well they coach it, but you know, with Eric Armstead and Nick Bosa on the same defensive line, that's an expensive defensive line once Nick gets paid. Uh, so yeah, I mean they. I, I think it's a good point. I mean they're doing it right now with. Uh, with the best left tackle in the game, obviously. I think I would expect at this point 
We've talked about this. McGlinchey to be back on some semi-reasonable number with them, but I don't know. Maybe not. You know, the Bengals are an example. They got to the Super Bowl last year with, I think, what people considered a bad offensive line. Well, I think the tough part with McGlinchey will be if McGlinchey just has a solid season. Like, he looks like he can just be a solid starter at right tackle. You know what his agent will say? How often do solid offensive tackles hit the open market? You will get overpaid, and the Niners would be like, want to give him a team-friendly deal, but his yeah. agent would be like, if you sign for $25 million guaranteed, or just, the Niners number would probably be much smaller in the open market. It, it could yeah. be 50% lower. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I also don't think it's, it would, is that a, that's he, pass protection is not his strength anyway, right? Which no. is what we're talking about here. We're not talking about run running the ball. I, I think back to the Niners, the, the way they're 20, the way their Super Bowl ended in 19 and the way last year ended the NFC Championship game with pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. I remember Jimmy trying to get out of the Super Bowl, out of the pocket, and get the ball to Kittle. And think about, remember the way the the Rams game ended with Garoppolo like throwing the ball backwards over his shoulder. I mean, and that you know there was pressure on him throughout that game. And I think every quarterback is going to get pressure. Ultimately, it's one of the reasons. I, I feel Trey like Lance, I feel like Stafford was getting mollywopped in that game too. Yeah, what's the point? Like everybody is going to be under pressure to some degree. So a quarterback who knows how to a get out of it now get get rid of the ball quickly that's one way to avoid it. We'll see how much Trey does that, but there's no question. Not just is he mobile, but his his physicality should help the 49ers in this regard. In defense of Jimmy Garoppolo's ending as a 49er, Joe Burrow's season ended the same way in the Super Bowl. It did a hundred percent, and he is mobile. <laughs> yeah, right. He's but Burrow's more mobile than it's actually really similar to the way. Very similar. It's like same deal. Ba- basically like around. if 99 wants to try you're kind of screwed <laughs> you know it's just can that guy slow down a little bit doesn't feel like he gets fat and happy does it with more money 